Keith. Um, yeah. Hello, developers. Welcome to the plugin development <coughs> front end solution with JavaScript Mutation Observer. You might already know me in the pre, uh, in the pre presentation yesterday. Please allow me to quickly introduce myself again for those who missed the session yesterday. My name is Mike Chong. I'm a senior solution consultant at Cogit and also a certified zero point adding IQ security architect. I'm originally from Taiwan. At the moment, I live in Germany. One of my main responsibilities within Cogit is in charge of our plugin developments and maintenance. So here's the agenda of today's session. We will start with a short in introduction, and then we will also align on the IDE used in this practice. In this session, we use part of the code from Kogi Access Request Extension plugin to demonstrate how JavaScript mutation observer benefits the IQ plugin development. After all, there will be a demo session and the reference of the materials. There will be no Q&A session. Instead, please leave your questions in the chat or on the developer community post. And here we start. First of all, as an employee of Cogit, allow me to briefly introduce my company. We are one of the leading consultancy firm in Germany, especially in IM area. We are also a solid partner with SailPoint in Europe. Our company provides consultancy service, including analysis, implementations, and technical support. Additionally, we also provide palm solutions such as Beyond Trust and CyberArk and the raw analysis solution to our customers. We also publish some interesting plugin solutions on the market. Here are the list of Kogi IQ plugin library. Most of them are certified and available on campus to be inquired. Then ID setup. Before we start, I still strongly suggest developer to have uh, some extended knowledge in IIQ plugin development. Here are the list of resources as a starting point for your journey. Environment setup first, here I'm mainly using Eclipse plus the IIQ DA mainly for the plugin project creation. In this practice, there's no, uh, there's actually no backend, uh, the backend Java implementation, but I still using Eclipse and IIQ DA simply for the uh, uh, plugin project uh, creation. And second, I'm mainly using the VS Code for the JavaScript development. An IQ instance is required for testing. I will using IQ 8.3 instance as a demo server later in the presentation. So first of all, let's create the plugin framework, uh, plugin framework and build project. As a shortcut, it's quite easy to use in the IQ DA Eclipse plugin to uh, using the wizard for, uh, to create the plugin framework project on Eclipse. And then we will need to create the uh, subfolders <coughs> under the web folder and also download the hash change library from the link provided and place it in the, uh, in the folder we just created. Then we create another JavaScript file under the folder we just created. And the name is not so important here, but you can, I will simply name, name it as request manage access inject. You can name us what, what you wish, but config exactly the same in the manifest file. Okay, JavaScript mutation observer and hash change. So why mutation observer? Starting with IQ8, some of the pages such as Manage User Access is using AngularJS as a single page application. A single page application is a web application that loads a single HTML page. <coughs> and during each trigger event, only a part of the page gets updated instead of the entire page. And this makes it hard to use in JavaScript snip like jQuery to inject custom DOM object into those pages as the corresponding component is dynamically loaded. And several months before while I asked these questions on the developer community, Christian Canary, 
uh, credit to him. That hint me that the mutation observer can be used to overcome this bottleneck. In this session, we will use mutation observer and hash change event to customize the managed user access flow. Mutation observer is a web API providing by modern browsers to detect changes in the DOM object. The hash change event triggered when the fragment identifier of the URL has changed. In this practice, as I mentioned, we will demonstrate partition function used by a Colgit access request extension plugin. This plugin has provided several features, including mandatory, mandatory sunrise sunset and also validation on the request submit, submission. But today we mainly focus on the search field filter within the account selection mode. The use case on the account selection mode is that there is no score bar, no filter that makes this makes it difficult while well, select account on the identity, which has a lot of correlated accounts. On Compass, I have posed a solution which we can do some black customization on the zero point bundle libraries to have a search filter available on the account selection mode. However, <coughs> such black customization may not be so, it may not be a good idea in terms of maintenance or during the upgrade. Therefore, we have the idea to build a plugin using JavaScript snip to customize the GUI of managed user access flow. However, per my knowledge, there's no official documentation describe the entire front end. So the easiest approach here is to use the browser developer tool to inspect which component we want to customize. In this case, we're focusing on the directive with ID account selection dialog, which is pointing to the account selection mode we just showed, we just see. Then we, then we define the mutation observer function to monitor if the account selection dialog directive has been added into the DOM object. Once the account selection dialog directive is detected, we can then use jQuery to insert our custom search input. The search input field has a key up event. It triggers the filter account selection functions. The field, this filter account selection functions loop through all the AngularJS repeat object which are the selectable, account, selectable accounts, and compare if the account name contains the input value. If not, then hide that object. The hash change event is used to only start the mutation observer if we are in the manage access page. The reason behind is that we don't want to cause additional browser computation power on other pages. So here is the outcome. We will further test it in the demo session. The demo plugin is quite simple. We simply need to put the JavaScripts under the snips entry of the manifest file, and then use the Eclipse to build the plugin. So let's come to the demo. So under the manage user access, It's quite slow on <laughs> my instance today. Okay, I will select one of the identity, which I already know there are multiple accounts uh, correlated here. Okay, I will find the row. So once I click this uh, row, there will be, <clears throat> this will be, sorry. Um, Nope, I select the wrong one. Uh, so this or this user has multiple accounts, but in in some use cases, in in case that you are, you are going to manage 
an identity which has like a 100 or 200 accounts correlated, then there, this, uh, this kind of search field will be very useful. Such an identity can be played as a container like open identity or surface identity, which holds a bunch of the uh, non-personal accounts. And uh, once the user going to match those accounts through those non-personal identities, they will find very difficult that they need to score or using the browser search to find the accounts to be to be select. So with this search box, that you can they can simply type the keywords and they can filter easily what account and instead of to score on the long page, and or using the browser search to select the accounts. So it's just simplify and the, enhance the user experience while doing the account selection. Other behavior, that as, as this is simply a pure front-end solution, there's no other um, behavior that required here. So it's all other flow is the same. Yes, so that's the that's the main topic here today to a uh, small example, simple example that we demonstrate here how the mutation observer can benefit the uh, front-end solutions. Yeah. And I will, since I, we still have some minutes, I would like to show a, a little bit more inspiration that we brainstorm how this can uh, for, can help in other area that we find quite interesting uh, in the menu user access. Uh, therefore, I would like to uh, enable our CoGit access request extension plugin. And again, we back to the menu user access uh, page. So now, uh, in some of the use cases that for uh, that user, the end user want to manage the account, but he has no knowledge about which identity hold that account. This can happen in the customer who implement the multi-account design in their organization. In that case, searching by account can be quite a, can be a useful. A uh, feature that, for example, I simply want to uh, manage account which I coach, which I I only know this account has a keyword called shared, but I don't know which identity hold that account, and then I can simply search, and then I know okay, uh, there are shared account one this link to this identity or shared account to link to this identity, and I'm going to manage shared account one when I submit, then it will help me to automatically search the identity hold that account. And now I can uh, start to request for that identity. Oh, sorry, it's quite slow today. <laughs> Let's apply. Uh, okay, next. And then, as I mentioned, there are some additional checkings. So once I submit, uh, there's also possibility that with with our with this plugin, we can also invoke some custom message saying that to do the mandatory sunrise sunset to checking on the request. And then once we say there's a, a account, uh, there's a date required, then I can also simulate. I need to put the end date for this uh, role, and another. In injection can also happen on the button that we go to the back end, calculate some uh, validation that, okay, the sunrise sunset for this need to be only seven days. So some kind of injection in, in conclusion that we can enhance using the mutation observer to enhance the user behavior, to enhance the main use case in the main user access here. And I think that's the, the end of the demo. And uh, thanks a lot and I almost uh, come to the end. And I already put all the resources on the corresponding developer community post. In case there's any question, please also your question in the community post or in the chat. Thank you for the um, for joining the, the opportunity. Okay.